everybody, welcome back to my floor. I'm Vault Fox, and today I'm going to show you oh, how I 3D printed, primed, and painted my Bo Katan helmet from season 7 of The Clone Wars. Before I get started on this video, I did want to address a couple of things. One is that I am filming this on my iPad. I just wanted to kind of switch things up, see how it looked. So if you could give me feedback on like the quality of the video or the sound, that would be great. Number two is this. So about two weeks ago, I was riding bikes with my husband, and we have these special type of pedals called clipless pedals. Essentially, you have these type of pedals on your bike, and you have a type of shoe that clips into the pedal, and it allows for your shoes and your feet to be in like the proper position to ride. So your feet are clipped into the bike, and to get out of them, you have to kind of twist your ankle and then, you know, brace yourself on the ground. It's a different type of sensation because your feet are essentially locked in the bike and you kind of have to train yourself to actually get your feet out. So whenever we got down to the trail, my husband said, hey, let's um, practice stopping in the parking lot. And I'm like, okay, yeah, great. So the funny thing is that I took a picture right here, put it on Instagram, and then literally a minute later, we went around the parking lot. He told me to, you know, unclip my shoe and I did. And then I didn't take my foot out to brace myself on the ground. So I was kind of like this and then, pfft, it's really funny because a lot of people are like, oh my god, I can't believe you broke your arm, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it, it's just hilarious to me because of all the times to break my arm, this is the time that I break my arm. So, you know, after that happened, I'm kind of like, oh my god, in shock of what I did. Let me tell you, we still finished our 12 mile ride. It probably wasn't the best thing that I ever did. I was kind of riding like this way because I couldn't put pressure on it. I, I honestly was fine until we got home and then I tried to take my shirt off. <laughs> And I tried pulling my arm like this and it was just like, no, I can't do this. So my husband came in and he's like, we're going to go to the hospital. And I was like, I don't want to go to the hospital right now. Of all the times to go to the hospital, this is like the one time that I don't want to go. But I mean, he was going to win this argument. So we ended up going to a med express. They, it was kind of interesting. I had to walk up to the door, call a phone number and say, hey, I need to be seen for this. And they basically went through the whole virus checklist of saying, okay, you don't have X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. And as soon as I finished, you know, answering all their questions and all that stuff, they took me right in, right to the back. And I, you know, kind of just went bam, bam, bam. And we were out within an hour. They took x-rays. I have a radial head fracture, which essentially means I broke my elbow. They told me to go see an orthopedic guy the next day just to make sure I like, didn't need surgery or anything. Whenever I saw them, it was the same kind of deal. You know, like they took my temperature before I came in, asked me all the questions. I don't need surgery on it or anything like that. I just need to wear in a sling right now it's been two weeks since that so yeah that's why this is in a sling and why during the course of this footage you'll probably see me using two hands and then eventually it'll turn into only using one hand so yeah that's been my life for the past two weeks other than making this bow katan helmet it's been quite interesting let me tell you but if you want to see how i made this helmet then just keep on watching before I get into the tutorial, I thought I'd let you know that I use the CR10 3D printer. Had it about a year and a half. Haven't had too many issues with it. The only thing that has happened is that the heated bed did short out on me, but they were very quick to send me a replacement part for that. Just haven't put it in yet. The helmet file I'm going to be using today is from Project 842 on Etsy. I know that there's a couple free ones out there, but honestly, I really trust Project 842's files. They're really great and you get two in this one. Now that we have our files, I'm going to go into a program called Mesh Mixer, which is a free slicing software that you can use to modify different models. And whenever you're in there, you're going to go down to edit and click on transform. And we're just going to want to situate the helmet a little bit straighter and upright so that we can better cut it in the next step. Click on edit, plain cut, and you'll see this interface here that'll allow you to actually intersect the model. Just place it wherever you want to cut on the dome. I like to go a little bit up as you can see. Click slice and keep both groups and apply and it looks like nothing happened, but trust me it did. You're going to go down to edit again, separate shells, and as you can see it is now in two pieces. So you'll just want to take both of these and export them as their own individual file. Now that our file is split into two pieces, I have the bottom part of Bose Helmet open up here in Cura. It's a free software to use to get things ready for printing. And what you'll see here is I'm actually taking the bottom of this helmet and I'm going to flip it so that the top is actually on the build plate. So I like to split them up into two, flip the bottom part on its head so that it'll have better plate adhesion. There's less supports being generated as well. And as you can see on the right side, those are all of my typical settings that I have on my printer. But I have to implore you that every printer is different, every filament is different so you kind of have to do a little bit of trial and error on your own end. One thing that I'd like to mention is the type of supports that I use. I use these tree supports that are built into Kira. They're under the experimental tab. They work great for printing helmets, for printing you know bigger armor pieces because they're so easy to remove and they use so much less filament than the traditional types of support. So I recommend checking them out. And now that everything is loaded up into Kira, I'm going to save this to my little micro drive and get it onto my printer. I hope that this little um, mini tutorial on 3D printing kind of helps 
helped. I can always make something longer in the future if you guys are interested. And with some editing magic, the print is completely done. I just am getting it off of the bed with a little scraper that I have, and it's looking pretty good. Now that everything is off the printer, I'm taking some black warbler and some super glue, and I'm going to be making some tabs that I'm going to glue onto the bottom of the helmet. I'm going to do four of these tabs, and this is just going to help me align the dome later on in the process. You don't have to do this, but I find that it helps me a lot because I'm pretty bad at aligning this stuff. And even with these tabs, I ended up still having a little bit of a gap. So, but again, here I am with the top of the dome, and I'm just putting some super glue all along the edges. And then I'm going to situate it here onto the bottom of the helmet very carefully. Try and get it as aligned as you possibly can. And then I hit it with some of that super glue zip kicker. That just helps the super glue cure a lot quicker. And I'm also smoothing it a little bit with my hand. Don't really recommend that because if you get any super glue on your finger and you have that zip kicker on, it's going to burn like hell. Um, but I've got like no feeling in my finger, so I do it anyway. <laughs> and then here we are with the inside of the helmet. I'm just putting a little bit of super glue in there as well. Get that seam nice and bonded. After that super glue is dried, I'm getting out my Bondo, a pair of gloves, and a popsicle stick, and I'm going to mix up some of the Bondo, and we're going to smooth that over top of that seam so that we can sand it down to be nice and flush. What I like to do with Bondo is I take about a golf ball size of the gray portion and then squeeze in about a pea size amount of the red hardener and mix that up until it's about a... It kind of looks like the color of the chicken nugget stuff. Like, does anyone remember that chicken nugget in video where they said what the chicken nuggets came from? It's kind of what it looks like to me. Anyways, I smooth that all over the seam. I like to take it with a popsicle stick just to kind of smear it on there and then I go over it with my gloves to flatten it a lot more. I definitely recommend going over this with gloves to try and get it as smooth as you possibly can. It will save you a lot of time later where you won't have to sand it down as much. You might find that you need to do more than one coat of Bondo and that's totally fine. I think I ended up doing about three and they weren't completely around the entire helmet. It was certain spots had to be hit a little bit more. I didn't film this next part because you know what? The next part is sanding and that's about as fun to watch as it is to do. So I took my palm sander with some 80, 100, and 120 gray and went out to my garage for about two hours in a good audiobook. And I went into all of those striations and the print lines all over the helmet as well as over the seam that we had just done with Bondo. At this point, I'm pretty satisfied with how smooth it's looking. So I'm going to prep it for taking it outside for some filler primer. To do that, I'm just putting some some duct tape on the inside of the visor so that the inside of the helmet doesn't get all messed up. Now I head outside to my garage with the filler primer and my helmet and give it a nice thin coat. Don't go too heavy handed with this stuff because if you do, it's going to be goopy. We don't want goopy layers because whenever we go to the next step, which is sanding, it's going to make our life a lot easier. After your filler primer is dried for about 15 minutes, I like to go in with some 200 to 220 grit sandpaper and sand all of those high parts down. You might have to do two to three layers of filler primer followed with some sandpaper. It really just depends on how far you want to go. I tend to stop whenever my arm hurts or I just simply do not care anymore. When it is all primed and ready to go, it's time to get some paint on it. I'm using Montana Gold spray paint, but you can use whatever brand you like. You can even use airbrush paint, you can use acrylics. It's really up to you or whatever you have on hand. I give the black about four hours to cure, and then I come back outside and spray the entire helmet down with gray. After another four hours of cure time, I take some painter's tape and mask off all the areas of the helmet that I don't want to be white. Then I go in with my white spray paint and spray down all of the exposed parts of the helmet. Cured sufficiently, I go back over it with my masking tape and mask off all of the white areas. Then go ahead and spray on a coat of Signal Blue from Montana Gold, and I let this cure for an entire 24 hours. For the markings that go on the front of her helmet, I decided to use my thinner masking tape to mask off all of the little areas, like the arrows on the top as well as the V that goes atop her visor, and I sprayed that down with my Montana Gold Shock Black outside, let that cure for four hours, and here we go, taking everything off. I was going to do the same thing for the gray owl eyes and mask those, but at this point I had broken my arm and I just didn't want to do it anymore, so I ended up freehanding those. I went in with some pencil and then filled it in with gray paint later. Alright, so this is editing Robin right here because I completely forgot to show you how I did the rangefinder, mostly because I really wouldn't recommend what I did. So on Sean's file there actually is like a little cutout, and I'll show you, well it's not there anymore because I screwed it up, but there's actually a hole right here and that's where you're supposed to put an M3 screw. Basically that screw will go in through the inside of the helmet and you screw it on with the rangefinder as well and then it'll, you know, let it go back and forth. I was impatient and I decided I was going to attach mine with a neomidium magnet. It works as you can see but 
I needed to use a lot of magnets to get everything attached. All of these here are so that this will hold everything in place and therefore will hold this rangefinder in place. Again, I don't really recommend this because it's not as sturdy as a screw, but it's what I had on hand. I think I was just impatient. I didn't want to wait for an M3 screw to come in through Amazon. Also, didn't really want to order an M3 screw through Amazon because, I don't know, that just seems kind of wasteful. To get these magnets in, I took a soldering iron, kind of burnt a little hole, and then stuck my magnets in there as well. Did the same thing for the butt end. I guess that's what you could call it, the butt end of the rangefinder. Again, I don't... I don't know. It, it works, but I don't really recommend it. It's not the most sturdy thing in the world, but I guess there's another option if you don't want to wait for an M3 screw. So there you go. All that's left to do now on this helmet to get it ready is to make a visor. And to do that, I'm actually going to make a template out of some painter's tape first. So what I did was I went in with my green painter's tape and taped it to the inside of the helmet. I then traced around it with Sharpie and cut that out. I then take that template and trace it out on my welding mask material that I'll have linked down below, cut it out with some tin snips, and use my heat gun to form it a little bit so that it'll fit better inside the helmet. And as you can see at the bottom there, I've got two little tabs on either side, and that's where the visor sits in. I may do something for the top later, but for now, it's been working. And that's all that there is to it. Thanks again so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. And as always, this is only one way to make a helmet. There are thousands of other ways to make a helmet. You can make it out of foam. You can make it out of warbler. There are so many other materials, but this is just one way, and this is how I did it. So if you have any other questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye!